Amen and Amen and Amen. I believe that there are many things that we have learned already and are learning that may not have to be taught. A minister's conference requires discernment, the eyes to see and the perception to interpret correctly. Look how anointed and how powerful everyone who came to hold the mic was and is. And yet in the midst of all of that, their hearts are open to receive. See, this is why sometimes when I look at a lot of people who believe that they have nothing to learn, I really get very sad. I really get very sad. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let's get to the word. Um, I will just share a few things. And I stand as one who has been granted grace by God. When you teach in a pastor's conference, it takes the grace of God to really communicate the truth. But I really, really pray that our hearts be open to listen. There is nobody that will listen to this truth that will go down. It's true. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. Just a few things that I believe will help us in ministry, organizations, and so on and so forth. Let's read together. One, two, read. Say unto Archippus, uh -huh, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Let's read one more time. And say unto Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received from the Lord, that thou fulfill it. It's one thing to receive a ministry, and it's another thing to fulfill that ministry. Especially in the days that we live in, we must understand the secrets of the Lord that make for excelling especially in this generation so i'll be sharing a few principles that i believe make for sustainable impact in ministry i think it's wise that i back off a little and just maybe share with you my convictions about what i believe ministry is If you have to use a pulpit to believe you are in ministry, then you are not in ministry. A pulpit should be one of the least platforms for doing ministry. Unfortunately, the average pastor, permit me to speak with the bias um, for the fivefold, the average pastor believes that until you have access to the mic, and you talk to people on the pulpit there cannot be a platform for ministry i think that's that's terrible it's one of the vain deceptions that tradition brings it means is it possible for koinonia to still be in ministry and for two months there is no stage work are we together now I believe ministry starts with knowing God not blessing people not building churches the, the foundation for true ministry is a personal encounter with God there's no man who is truly qualified no matter what earthly and physical ordination there is no man who is qualified to claim to be in ministry except you understand the God that you are sent to represent 
for the most part the average preacher is concerned with dispensing truths listen carefully teaching writing books holding conferences and i agree with that there is a place for that but i am telling you true ministry from god's standpoint is your secret place with god because every ministry will rise to reflect your knowledge of god so you are really in ministry when you grow is proof of your love not just for god but for the people you lead every man of god will impart his limitation or otherwise on the people sent to be under his care so the foundation for true ministry is the knowledge of god unfortunately you see knowing god is not a very attractive thing there is no charismatism around knowing god there is no there's nobody watching you to give you the applause that we so desire knowing god is painful knowing god is time consuming knowing god is boring it is not natural for man in his human nature to seek god we don't have that kind of allowance we always like to see the results of what we are going to get before we start but when you start with god he says follow me i will make you but the extent of the making will be something i will reveal on the way follow me so the disciples were frustrated what are you turning us into we've been following tell us give us a clue and he looked at them we continue to follow you every day you cause trouble and i mean what just give us a preview let us know and one time they were tired of following and they took initiative and when jesus was not around they brought an epileptic patient and they said let's quickly try to shine and they were utterly disappointed when jesus came they were angry they had to probe him they said why didn't this happen hallelujah the knowledge of god the knowledge of god the knowledge of god the knowledge of god moses before he started ministry when he had an encounter with god please listen i'll be as simple as possible he said who shall i tell pharaoh sent me you're not going to stand before pharaoh and speak opinions and god said ah you are asking an interesting question okay let's leave the issue of pharaoh now let me reveal myself to you he says i am that i am please listen to me the safest anchor you will ever hold in ministry is not finance in ministry bank account it's not social media presence it's not even your intellect when all is said and done it is your knowledge of god that becomes your safest and most secure anchor let's be very careful because the times that we live in there is a lot of confidence in billions of naira and dollars in the account wonderful exegesis of scripture i'm a good teacher i'm a good preacher wonderful i'm innovative i am this and that and that and then our knowledge of god is very small very small and we find out that we do everything that should make ministry work yet it does not work every true ministry starts from the secret place not the pulpit the secret place and it doesn't matter if it's fivefold ministry or ministry as business or ministry as leadership it doesn't matter it will still start from the secret place so he revealed himself unto moses showed him certain dimensions of his glory he said now you have seen and you are convinced go and tell pharaoh let my people go god prepares you so that you are not scared of what you see you see when you really see god nothing else will scare you ministry is scary without an encounter i remember a gentleman three four years ago who just sent me a text 
he said he had a dream and he was going to start a church i said well i don't think it's the best decision he said you know the guy just cut off and went away started a church and just three or so weeks ago he sent me a text he said i can't believe what my life has become what is this and i told him when you stand before pharaoh without seeing the burning bush you've heard me say it again and again the first issue that started squeezing him was finance and then the second the reality of living with men and then all kinds of things and i told him i said you, you see what you've done to yourself say unto archippus take heed to the ministry that you have been given from god that thou fulfill it everybody say encounters please say it again say encounters if you do not know god you don't have a message if you do not know god you don't have a basis for representing him many preachers do not know god they were only ordained by a pastor they needed more pastors and they said now we want to expand and please i'm not being sarcastic at all you know my love for the body of christ and so i can now say we want to open 20 branches one two three four five i've observed your life come you are pastor this you are pastor that you are pastor this find your way here find your way there and the people get there and they know ministry ethics but they don't know god they know how to preach they understand all the homiletics and hermeneutics and everything but they do not know god and so the staying power especially when things don't produce as expected is not there let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the strong man in his might let not the rich man in his riches but let him that glory yet glory in this please listen that he know it and understandeth me i don't trust anything in my life outside god is uncertain the bible says that god has no variableness nor shadow of turning that's a serious statement he doesn't have night and day there is stability so when the anchor of your life and ministry is god no matter what happens you will remain standing is god speaking to us this morning encounters i remember years ago when the lord started with me you've heard me say it and i will keep saying it again and again god denied me the privilege of doing so many things and it was very very painful all that i had to do was spend time with him and build no preaching no nothing and at that time the number of people here who were in zaria at that time you know now there's a lot of the teaching has stabilized a lot of things but those who were there in zaria at that time oh boy you could see a man of god who can be you know all kinds of paraphernalia three or four people holding the briefcase and the man is just moving up and down well suited in a hot sun with nothing no message no encounters and i felt really sad for some of these people i remember once and again trying to reach out to them and say something may be wrong and you will regret it eventually but they wouldn't listen the greatest way to hurry in life is to stay with god if you ever call staying with god a delay you are joking if i sit in dangote's office from morning till night i may not say i wasted my day because humanly speaking in one moment and with one check he probably can create a lot of possibilities around my life we have indoctrinated ourselves listen into thinking that time spent with god 
is a waste he's shortchanging your time for shining we think the only way to shine is when you stand before men no i've learned the power of the secret place no matter what happens in your life if you stay in the secret place then you continue to move forward are we together everybody say encounter if you're in ministry here please listen carefully i don't care whether you've been in it 10 years two years your secret life must be greater than your public life to excel i continue this is very hard for me now even as i'm speaking because of my schedules and all of that it's very difficult it is luxury for me to really find quality time i tell you sincerely You must know God. You must have a serious encounter with God. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions. I have a lot of regard for people who are sincerely wrong. Because even in their error, they have conviction. I don't have a lot of regard for people who vacillate convictions at any show of hope. It's better for me to be sincerely wrong and stand there. It is easy to be adjusted. That's why Jesus had a problem with the scribes and the Pharisees. All of the people who were there, the madman knew he had demons. He just sat down there and it was easy for him to be free. Are we together now? An encounter creates convictions so that you don't believe this today believe this tomorrow return back to what you believe next week you are not going to be an effective minister that way because i'll be teaching you shortly you have to build people sequentially along a thought line i think this is one big mistake that pastors make i don't want to go ahead of myself we think that ministry exploits is in the scarceness of the truths we share that means every Sunday there must be one mystery or one thing I would dish out. And once people are saying, oh, boy, my God, can you imagine this dimension? You will find out after two, three years that it's like hopping to every faculty for lectures and expecting to be awarded degree. My question is in what? You didn't stay long enough in a department to be awarded that degree. Nobody is giving a degree nothing. convictions many preachers do not have convictions we teach and then you return back and doubt you too you were not very sure of what you taught you just return and say ah i hope i did the right thing i just hope that the truths that i share are really truths and after 10 20 years you'll find out that a lot of preachers will now say this ministry thing i'm done with it i was going to minister in house on the rock pastor fred and I, a gentleman came and met me and said apostle my father was once a pastor i said so what happened he said right now the man recites quran He's, he has become um what they call these these teachers yes i said what happened i would not mention the denomination just to honor them i said what happened he said he was a preacher nothing was working and they kept giving them you know the, they have the manual that you used to preach and when the guy finished the preaching he would go back and say what is this why am i deceiving myself it's not working my family is dying my life is dying i'm sick i'm tired many preachers are like that there are central topics shared around there are conventions you must hold when the time comes there are reports you must give doesn't matter whether god moved or not and so that ritual over a long time erodes god out of the process administration is important but without god is hellfire i believe in encounters i truly believe in convictions anything i'm not convicted about you will never hear me teach it there are things and areas you may never hear me teach on i may touch it here and there but my conviction has not grown beyond a threshold level to communicate it and i don't want to feel guilty 
for communicating that area are we together now we need convictions still on encounters you see let me teach us something very powerful by the privilege of god's grace the pattern for your ministry comes out of your experience with god listen very carefully god is a god of patterns and in as much as there are universal laws and principles we must be very careful I believe the suggestion to put the ark on a cart was because they saw it somewhere I don't believe they just said oh let's decide to put it on a cart they probably saw them carrying another deity through the ark and they say this is a cheaper method I mean why burden men when donkeys can do the work and in doing that there was a serious trouble in many pastors conferences and respectfully so we have to be very careful blueprints that were not part of the design moses received the blueprint on the he was not the architect but he received the blueprint the dimensions were given it's not enough to build the tabernacle you must build according to pattern if it will host the glory of god you need a pattern it's good to receive mentorship it's good to emulate but you must sit down lord how is this going to happen there are times you will say for your ministry you will only stand still and the egyptians you see today you will not see forever other times you will say go around jericho seven times it is not every time you stand near the water you have to part it there are times you will need you to work on it so don't assume that because the water parted yesterday you will part it tomorrow your pattern comes out of your experience out of your experience if you don't have an experience with god you will not have a pattern for ministry whatever trends is what you will hop into is god blessing us this morning an encounter with god creates convictions an encounter with god creates patterns the edge of any effective ministry among other things is the pattern we win generally in life not necessarily by the dexterity of the army but the flawlessness of the strategy it is also true spiritually i know a man of god who i think he once listened to my teaching where i was talking about the fact that you may not see any poster of koinonia here and there and the guy got up with zeal without knowledge and went to tell his people who said no you know if apostle can do it i can do it and then they refused they they said no visitors sleep again no um uh, what they call it uh, flyer he even truly speaking canceled they have what they call a follow-up department canceled everything say if god cannot bring them by and the guy was suffering terribly terribly It wasn't even him that reached out to me it was someone else that reached out to me and said please you will need to help my pastor i think something is wrong let it not be that is your message that is confusing this man and i said no you see there is a difference between a doctrine and a personalized dealing there are blueprints that god gives you on account this is one of the benefits of the secret place there are things that god will give you customized to your work with god it is an error if you build a doctrine out of it most of the traditions that destroy the body today started as personalized dealings that god gave men because of my work with god listen carefully it's possible that to create efficiency god can tell me you my son do not have more than three children this is my dealings for you i have weighed it and seen that your most efficient state will be with three children only now when i take that person because of the efficiency that comes by keeping in what to what god told me i will now say look the most recommended way to be effective in ministry is to have three children whereas the destiny of the next prophet is in the fifth child 
tradition will stop a prophet from coming to bless a generation preachers let's learn this this is why encounters are powerful i'm still buttressing on encounters that god will teach you the difference there are things god has told me you will never 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 hear me tell anybody it's between me and god it's like a code of operation come pastor it's like a spiritual system of operation so the for william branham listen for william branham there was a way that the angel of the lord will come in a meeting are we together now william branham will wait oh, for a long time praise and worship the worship team is singing and the guy will just wait what are you waiting for he says waiting for the angel it was a pattern and as soon as the angel came that's it his eyes if that angel did not come sir this man it will be like a charm he can't see now by the time we create a ministry out of that and you now mentor people that the only way to minister is to wait for the coming of william branham's angel are you seeing that now before you know it a spirit will come as that angel because these spirits can appear as angels of light this is how many people got into error subconsciously so an angel will come and tap you and say i'm here now this guy's name is femi you say what's your name femi you say this thing is working i mean i can't, I can't believe this you didn't go into error knowingly not understanding the difference between a doctrine you don't change doctrines there are, are principles defined by God's integrity. But because of the unique nature of man as an entity, God will have to create a system, a curriculum unique to you. That's why every man must know God for himself. I know men of God who don't worship. This is a distraction to them. You are playing that and clashing cymbals. They say, two of you, go out of my meeting. Please don't distract me and you are wondering how in the world is this guy going to heal the sick you keep watching you just keep watching the moment is time he will tell you it's time and from nowhere you will see people flinging wheelchairs and there are people when there is no keyboard when there is nothing playing you will truly think that they used to carry charms they will stand and look helpless and powerless benny him up until today huh benihin you see the way this protocol guy stand you stand in front in benihin's meeting like that he will send you away he doesn't want all of that they choose those who sit in front he doesn't want anybody when you are sharing and he's seen the voice of unbelief are you sure go to the back go to the back fast go to the back you must understand this these are the products of an encounter they will you're dealing with god then you know what to he will separate between personalized dealings and doctrines so every time you are teaching your personalized dealings you put a disclaimer this is to support your understanding not just to create a pathway are we together now Papa Ie Adeboe kneels down when he's about to preach. It's not in the Bible. Paul bows his knees to pray for the people. But because of his work with God and a system he created by the wisdom of the Spirit to acknowledge God. It is alright if you have the revelation for it. But there are many people as they are kneeling down you know that this person is just doing nonsense sometimes they don't even pray they just kneel down and rest their head and stand up to fulfill the ritual everybody say patterns you must know god for yourself i can tell you not only when an anointing comes to the place but what anointing and it will not always be by visions these are things that cannot exactly be taught they were products of the secret place i was trained by the spirit to recognize anointings 
I can know what anointing is in a place. It's not everything you say that you see. I remember the first time I started seeing angels. Please listen. I didn't see angelic beings. I started seeing like, you know how a ribbon is. You know how, you know how children play with ribbons. This is what I was seeing. I didn't even understand what I was seeing. Until I stayed in the secret place. And then I remembered that angels move in the similitude of light. And then God started helping me. Even before I started seeing angels read. But today there's a lot of lies. People say I'm seeing an angel standing. They are even saying Jesus is standing here. Jesus. You go and read your Bible. And see what happened to men when they saw him in his glory. Nobody saw Jesus in his glory. And just stood like that laughing. No. Let me tell you. If an angel appears here. Or any spirit being. If one eye can see it, that doorway, that interface that has been created must create a reaction. The rest may not see, but they will know something has happened. Look at Paul, Saul of Tarsus. The moment Jesus appeared, he was the only one seeing him. The rest just found out they were falling. What in the world is going on here? Because that pattern is not there. We have to invent lies. Lie word of knowledge lie prophecy lie anything because we have been taught that once you can prophesy ministry will be lucrative it's dangerous everybody say encounters you must know god for yourself that when you stand and tell people god will bless you you know the god you are talking about and the fact that he can bless you listen the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob must become your God. There is a name that your experience must give God. That name is the dimension he will flow with in your ministry. You hear Kenneth Copeland when he's ministering, he can just turn and say, yes, sir, I'm hearing you, sir. As if he's talking to his friend. It's his way of knowing God and that encounter that he's had with God. Are we learning something this morning? This is very important. So we need a revelation of an encounter with who God is. Ministry can be extremely distracting. It is your knowledge of God that keeps you in focus. Do you know you can succeed in ministry as an art? The same way you become a tailor the same way you become a a chef you can become a minister a preacher a dispenser of teachings and there is no life there is no power unfortunately members have enough discernment to know whether you are connected to life while you speak at first it will start like a dissatisfaction the wedding in cana and the wine finished preaching is still going on and somehow that life the life giving factor in your communication that is is only obtainable in the secret place is not there while you teach truth so you find out that what you are teaching is true but the corresponding transformation is not coming ask anyone you know who is close to me I don't sit down preparing sermons just by saying, no, I think this is nice. Um, First Corinthians, this, I think they would like to hear this. Wow, this is wonderful, brilliant, amazing. I mean, this and that and that. I've been preaching for a while. And let me tell you sincerely, it is possible for me to sit down and not open my Bible and not study. And except God reveals to you by word of knowledge, you will not know. Like I said, it's an art. When you have been opening a book a long time, you are not too dull. Some scripture would have been in your head. Just because what you are saying is correct does not mean it is anointed. Encounters. Encounters. You must make room for God in your life if you want to be effective as a man of God. Listen to me. We have a space, pastor, for our cars. Even if you have 10 cars, you put a garage for them. We have a storehouse where we keep food. 
we have a place for our jewelries ladies jewelries no matter how small the room is there is a small box or something we have where we hide money even if it is in a pit somewhere but there is no space for god in our lives and our environment we smuggle him through any way and say god you just manage it and he looks at the space you have for your car he looks at the space you have for your clothes and he says where is my own place where is my own place ministry is an overflow of your secret place ministry true ministry is an overflow of your experience with god impactful ministry is an overflow of your experience with god listen ministry is not teaching necessarily not preaching necessarily not just healing the sick necessarily but the transformation that can come to a people and a territory on account of your knowing god and your understanding his ways this is ministry every other channel they are just platforms they are support systems the life giving part of ministry is your knowledge of god there are men of god who can be so busy one meeting here one leadership meeting here and there you are concentrating on the support structures we'll talk about that a little but i need the the epicenter the pivotal point of a ministry is a man's knowing god so i know you are preparing for ministry not just because you are buying banners and suits not even when you are painting your office and putting a chair i know you are preparing for ministry to the degree to which your hunger and your passion for god is growing i look at your secret place and i know the efficiency that will come from ministry let me tell you why this is powerful our generation is unforgiving about mediocrity if they give a chance to hear god from you and you mess up it will take mercy to bring you back to that stage there are too many alternatives today gone are the days where you have only one voice and they have to make do with that voice right now the moment you don't dispense truth there are scattered around the entire globe are people who are serious with god his presence the gift and the blessing that comes from knowing him his power that comes from a relationship you know i i shared with you um, my story you may have heard me say it one time where i used to stay uh, in the quarters a, a few years ago um i have this neighbor here and there he's also involved in um uh, what do i call it now it may not be fair to call him a herbalist would i say he's a herbalist but he does well you you know what i'm talking about isn't it yes and he believes he helps people with it you know and he has helped people he told me his whole track record that he goes to lagos and does all of that and so when i came to stay there things started really going bad for him because nobody was coming there again and then one night this is true he just came and just knocked on my door and i came out and in a very personal way he said look you know the way his life is going now kai this thing is not really working and he was talking to me whether there was a a possibility for collaboration and there was a way i could like lend him whatever i was using it's true it's very true and so i laughed i told him i said sir i understand he said his own is a gift they inherited it from their own father so it's not some he's not a bad man let me he's one of the nicest men i know till date he's a wonderful man so i'm not talking of an um an evil man in terms of maybe character no he's a sincere person and I told him, I said, in this life, in this faith walk, the power you get is not something that is in your hand, independent of God. It comes from a relationship. It's like an intercourse where the woman's pregnancy is dependent on her meeting her husband. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You can go to a herbalist and collect power and don't even know his name. I came because I'm in trouble says do you have the goat the black goat is here what else here and gives you the charm and you leave but that's not the way it is with god when you come and say god give me your hand he said take my heart first it starts with my heart you find my hand in my heart 
very important whatever has the possibility of destroying listen destroying your love your hunger your passion for more of god you have to trust god for grace to create a system around it and throw it out of your life are you getting what i'm saying it's powerful the most destructive things that can kill a man of god are not evil things they are good things evil things you can easily detect and run back pride lost you can run back to the secret place but money accolades you will read the scripture and say this is what should happen to a man when you are serious so you will believe god is working and you will not grow satan will always use something good to destroy you he will seldom use something evil it will be too noticeable everybody say encounters very powerful god bless you pastor from your encounter will also come your message the message or your mandate please write it down to make sustainable impact in a territory in a generation you must have what we call the message not a message you can have messages you can have sermons but what is the message every great man i know no matter how vast in spiritual truths has a central theme that represents the communication of what god has granted him access to see to know and to communicate to a generation are we together now pastor fred was saying something very instructive when he came here it truly is important you see the best of any minister is only an effective minister there is no how you can see all of god from one standpoint so he distributed his dimensions across the body and no matter how effective you are no matter how vast you are in knowledge you will have to be compelled by the spirit to stay and understand god in a dimension when you mention joshua selman you don't think relationship and marriage and this. no doesn't mean i don't know anything about it but i'm not an expert it's a waste of time if you invite me there somebody will be shouting while i'm saying let us pray and that's not what you plan for people are sitting in a round table with jews and not have you ever seen anyone invite me for a valentine talk no does that mean i don't know what to say about relationship and marriage you will be joking When you are sick and you are lost, Benihin comes. When you are weak and there's no faith working in you, Kenneth Copeland comes. Are we together now? When there are all sorts of oppressions in your life, Dr. D.K. Olukoya comes. When your life is scattered and you need mercy fast, Papa Kumui will come with one message. How many? One one message you will hear you won't know whether to stand or to sit down or to lie down listen nobody rewards you until you brand your impact constructively are you getting what i'm saying now impact cannot be haphazard you must brand it with the unique dimension of god committed to you I should be able to did you look at all the men of god that came here right from yesterday you can almost speak the unique grace the unique operation everybody said the message the message represents why you exist as a ministry you must have the message what did god send you to do he sent me to preach the gospel no that's not your message that's the great commission it wasn't given to you it was given to all of us or a robot said every time he would say this my assignment is to take the healing power of jesus to the nations and the pattern for dispensing it is by laying on of hands even if you were ten thousand he will not pray like benny Hinn and then take testimonies he will lay hands one by one that's why he succeeded he was one time the greatest 
healing evangelists in the United States. T.L. Osborne was granted that grace to communicate a message. His entire ministry was centered around the message of the saving, the healing, and the delivering power of Jesus. When you listen to Samadhi even if Samadhi holds a business, I mean a, a healing service, in that healing service, he must mention value. That the power of God has come to give you value. Oh, his, his lingua franca will betray him. It will rebrand him back. You are not ready to be honored when there is confusion as to what you represent to the body. So you must have a message. It must be clear. The Bible says, write the vision. Make it plain so that he will run that reads it. These are very simple truths, but you need to understand this. The message. A flourishing and an impactful ministry must have a message. Hill song. Many of you know Hill song because of their music. They are not just singers, they have an exact message. And the message is to see Jesus glorified. As simple as that. All their songs are centered around the cross and the finished work of Christ. That's all they sing about. Don Muen, listen to him very carefully. Don Muen, the entire scope of his music ministry is not just to reveal Jesus but also to communicate hope and life. You listen to his songs. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. So that among the many artists we have, when you really need hope, you know who to go to. It's very important. The message. Number two. The second ingredient that will make a sustainable ministry is a strong leadership and an organizational structure. Now please pay attention. We started well by talking about our knowledge of God, our encounter from which comes the message from which comes the pattern from which comes our convictions as powerful as all that i just said is if you do not have a strong leadership structure well structured with clear tasks and expectations you may fail this i believe is where i will want to take a pause and honor so many ministries that have poured into my life in this area especially the house on the rock truly speaking i honor them for this one thing because based on my background there was no there was no system to stimulate leadership and excellence are we together now yes but as god began to grant me access to truths and quality relationships he began to help me to see the need for effective leadership when it was time for people to eat bread jesus said let the people sit down in 50s why because if you have a crowd of five thousand people and everybody tries to collect that bread they will kill you and kill the messiah if they can and eat the bread if there is no order one person's appetite will eat one basket they sat down and wastage was minimized it's important you cannot just allow anything to happen from and by everybody in ministry no there has to be a system spiritual people have this problem anointed men and women of god are some of the most disorganized people as ministers why because of the excellency you know when you truly are anointed and you have a message people will forgive every other thing and just endure but it doesn't mean they were designed to be that way is somebody getting what i'm saying leadership to the extent that the secret to scattering the sheep is not to chase them is just to strike the shepherd that's all 
when god wants to destroy i mean the devil wants to destroy a sheep he does something to the shepherd and that's it moses was weary leading about 2.5 million people he was tired he was fagged out and he went and was frustrated and jethro his father-in-law came to him and said mister you are going to weary yourself everything you are involved in you are a human being he said set captains over thousands over hundreds over fifties and he created that leadership structure let them be the ones to handle some of the issues in the early church there was a very intelligent organogram where the apostles were not allowed to be involved in matters of tables when the Christian women remember and the, the women began to fight in every organization once a crowd is more than 12 get ready the humanity of men will play it is leadership that will solve it not prayer for as long as there are one two three four five six seven it is possible for dr emeka to hit me unknowingly who do i report to there is nobody i report to myself and i react back by saying mr man the next time you hold me i will kill you and he will prove to me that he's a doctor you see that chaos and anarchy many times we forget that we are spiritual but we are also human leadership was designed to manage the humanity of men i hope you know divorce now i'm not talking about marriage and i don't want to talk about a very touchy area but i'm saying that was the extent of moses's leadership he found out that things were happening he could not understand and he said lord please permit me i'm going to have to invent a strategy because in this camp of 2.5 million some people have been beating their wives in a way that i don't think my conscience will allow and then god said okay in that case let there be a certificate that will mean that the people have been separated it was not god's original idea but for the sake of peace and organization moses had to invent a strategy leadership is very powerful it makes ministry easy leadership helps you to identify what is wrong you can't blame everybody for one person's mistake if the sounds go off i can't begin to quarrel you and say sam why did the sound go off that's none of his business are you seeing that now when Achan carried part of the treasures in Jericho that should not be carried there was a system of isolating them from tribe to clan until it came to his family it would have been unfair to punish everybody but leadership provided an opportunity to isolate where the trouble was to deal with it when there is no leadership you will blame you will sabotage the creativity and the effort of others because of one person's mistake there has to be clearly defined tasks and expectations let me tell you this never provide an office when there is no need for it whether it's in an organization or it is in ministry do not create an office when there is no need for it human beings cannot stand being idle and they will find something to do a church of say 100 people should not be having pro1 pro2 vice president admin vice president this vice president that the work can effectively be done by two or three people the other seven or ten people will have to look for a way to be relevant is intrinsic in the human to feel that he's making progress and they will have to invent assignments or tamper with other job descriptions for a long time there was no public relations department in this ministry the protocol department was doing the work of five departments because we had not seen a need to create it as god began to bless the ministry the need came and now we had to carve out a department that responds and represents our presence to the international community 
very very important there is something called due season for things and by the time you create leadership structures that is not yet the season for them you are going to cause a lot of trouble chaos and anarchy if you're with me please say amen, amen. well structured with clear tasks and expectations let me give you an advice that i learned following a pastor's conference i think it's a very instructive advice allow for creativity but never without supervision you cannot indefinitely allow people to be creative and just to continue to invent strategies without supervision because their creativity will stretch them sometimes to go out of the pattern given to you by god so it is good that people become and remain creative but that their creativity must be within the jurisdiction of the the order that was given to you if you allow people there are things they will do that will get to a point where god will ask you who sent you in this ministry for instance i'm someone who is very comfortable to allow our precious people and they know i love them with all my heart to be able to come up with their ways i don't unnecessarily interrupt there is a level of autonomy within the various departments but never without supervision you don't invent an idea and execute it like that no everybody say leadership this is very very important number three The third key that is responsible for making sustainable impact in ministry is to understand your execution strategy. Now, these things I'm teaching are very powerful. They are not my opinions necessarily. They are truths that I've gleaned from ministries that have worked based on God's standard and even by the standard of success i've had the privilege by the grace of god to study the largest and most impactful churches in every continent execution strategy that means the strategies you put in place that will allow that vision to come to pass there are three things under this number one your execution strategy is what will invent the activities of the ministry within that season every activity should not be receivable just because a church is doing it a man of god is doing it does not just mean you just ship it and bring it no your programs the subdivisions of the ministry and the various activities in the ministry they come from your execution strategy how god said to do what you should do you see for instance in the miracle service we we didn't start submitting prayer requests eventually god gave me this and said it's an opportunity to be able to pray for the people so every miracle service we collect the request representing the pain of the people and we cry before the lord here and you can tell the testimonies that have come out of it Almost every worker, if not every worker in this ministry, knows the subdivisions of the ministry. They are not a secret. Both the ones for the future and now, it is very clear. There is an exact leadership organogram that defines the various subdivisions of the ministry. These are the platforms through which the purposes of God, as committed to us, will be executed. Everybody say execution strategy. You need it in business. You need it in, in, in your organization, not just church. Under execution strategy, again, is your culture and ethics. Your culture and your ethics make part of your execution strategy. How do you behave? What is the modus operandi 
of the ministry in as much as we frown at tradition in as much as we frown at religion no organization becomes impactful until their impact is systematized are we together i have had the privilege to visit um the churches of all the men of god represented here and for every one of the churches there is a culture there is an ethic i humorously say it you don't find someone in koinonia just because i'm teaching and he's touched he will not just sit down with one thousand naira and hold it from where he is and just throw it and say let it get to the altar no it's not a culture it's not the way it's not the blueprint that god has given to us are we together don't i hope i hope you are not you're understanding what i'm saying it's very important when you go to the bank they have a system of working they have their work ethics they greet you and smile tired or not it's a system they are paid to do it if something falls on the ground now not everybody will come to pick it are we together now there is a system for picking it there is a department whose jurisdiction also make for remedying this kind of thing most people do not have a culture they do not have ethics let me tell you this culture and an ethic is a system of standardization that means everywhere koinonia service is held there should be an expected behavior there should be an expected pattern i have seen ministries look at this i have seen ministries where a whole service is like 10 churches in one now you would think nothing is wrong with that the guy who does the opening prayer invents his way of doing it and he does it maybe the way he saw somebody who mentored him the guy taking the praise and worship can choose to just do something and say pastor come up me and pastor we're going to dance are you seeing that now he thinks it's supposed to be a very nice thing he say you you must dance or someone can come up and sing worship and because he's taught say, everybody kneel down everybody in the whole church kneel down his presence is here you see those kinds of things destroy your you are anointed but you may never go far you will know you are wrong when you start a tv ministry when there is an angry person from one nation who will write you and tell the government ban this man he's, he's communicating wrong values to the people a culture there has to be a way of working is someone learning this now you systematize your impact when you have a culture train your workers train your workers give them the flexibility to be creative but you must train them when you are coming to perform a function what is the protocol for what you are doing if you are in house on the rock many of you have been there you would notice they have a system for collecting their offerings for praying for all of this based on the blueprint that was given beautiful system saves time the moment you give offering you pass it to the priest on the aisle and he stands and the ushers just walk pick it up and it's done there are churches their own pattern now regardless of efficiency their pattern is you first go outside are we together and then you give whatever key is comfortable to the music director and then you begin to dance you are liberty to choose how fast or how slow you want to dance and one person would dance and go back and dance and go back and listen listen i hope you are getting what i'm teaching you there are many things we do that at a localized platform they can forbear it but if you want to be global you must adjust not violate your convictions but you must be able to adjust to minister to people what kind of songs should you sing you can't leave everybody to his creativity to just raise any song 
I said, I just had a song this morning and I really like it. You will learn it now. Say this and that. And that song may not be compliant with the values as revealed by God to the ministry. Are we together? Ethics. How do you behave when wealthy people come into that church? How do you behave when politicians come? What is the system of receiving them? What is the system of welcoming them? You don't wait till they come. Then you start thinking, what do we do with this guy now? No. If, if the governor of this state or if someone now is going to come, what is the system? If you don't learn this, God cannot bring influential people under your care. If someone comes to testify up here and says, God bless me. I have a job. I mean, I have created jobs right now. I have the power. In fact, I'm thinking about it. Between now and next month, I'm even looking for about 300 people to give them jobs. What do you think will happen to those who are not employed? They will wait for him after service. They've already come with their CV for prayer. So straight, they will just go outside and will lay that person. And others may find his address and just come and knock many pastors have refused to come back to certain churches because of what the members did after the service they follow them to their house and say sorry i'm not don't be offended i i just i don't know if you can help me zip my house sir. the way god has blessed you no culture no ethic i'm going to share something and please pastor stand up pastor dan don't be embarrassed. Yesterday, after the meeting, the protocol came and met me. They packed all kinds of, um, some. I think it was a gift or so. They brought for him and the wife. And then they gave him and said, Kai, you blessed me. Take, sir. He refused to collect it. He said, give the protocol. I am here to learn. I am here to grow. And when the protocol met me, I looked, I said, oh, what a wise man. I said, whatever we can add to this and bless it, let us give him and honor him. You see that? A man of God that is in discipline can come to another man's house. Listen very carefully. I went to a particular church and a young man gave me a car. I said, no, 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 I'm not collecting this car. Go and give the car to your pastor and bless him. When he went to the pastor and said, sir, God spoke to me to give apostle this. The pastor called me and said, Apostle, this gentleman is serious. He wants to bless you with the car. I said, well, whatever it is, are you in agreement with this, sir? Culture. Anytime I go to a ministry and I want to do anything that I believe or I know is not the usual practice, I will usually seek for permission from the man of God or if I can come stand with him. These are things that you have to learn. It's not all about anointing, anointing, anointing. There are systems. The first system of recovery for a mighty army was the coming back of the skeletons, the structure. Are we together? Just like Pastor Fred shared, when you enter a man's house, listen, no matter how great you are, if you are in someone else's house, you have to walk with their system. If they remove their shoes outside, take off your shoes. I remember the time I went to minister in Cherubim and Seraphim. I was invited to minister there. And they were all happy that I was coming and I blessed God for it. As soon as I got there, you know, our dear people there said, No, 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 Apostle, enter with your shoes. I said, Why? Why should I enter with my shoes? I took off my shoes. Because that is the protocol. I learned this from Dr. Modok. Protocol is important. Adaptation is proof of honor. When you come to a ministry, don't come at your terms. Have the flexibility to bend to the practice. I never come to a church and then I'm just excited because of my relationship with the pastor. I just get up, I hold the mic, I say, God wants to move, choir just, and you sit down and wait for your time. If they call you to take offering, don't give word of knowledge. Let us pray. Father, we bless you for this and that and that. When you finish, God bless you. That's it. Pray for children. Don't start talking about marriage and pregnancy. Pray for children and leave that place. 
as the lord has granted me grace to minister in certain platforms i'm seeing the strictness of complying with these principles because here there are people that can be a bit free but in those places there are people who have earned the right to be offended when you violate their privacy in the name of spirituality is someone learning something execution you must know how to behave and how to function within any organization you must know and you must create a system that way how do they reach you if i want to invite you now and i don't have a relationship with you what is the system to reach you many ministries do not have official lines there's no system of reaching them if you are starting you can use your line for many years i handled my ministrations invitations myself because i didn't see a need to have all of that as as time went and i couldn't handle it again i transferred the responsibility to the protocol department there must be a culture and there must be an ethic are we together the third under execution strategy is priorities please don't be tired of what i'm teaching you we're soon going to pray if you truly want to be effective if you came here this morning it's not just for prayer and impartation is to know the ways of god and to excel these are the inner working systems that make for efficiency priorities that means your focus and your emphasis for the now it's not everything god gave you that you can do now there are things God will tell you that is for 10 years. Koinonia is going to have a TV ministry. We are going to have schools. We are going to have all kinds of things. But for now, for now, this is the assignment allocated for now. And so we restrict ourselves. Listen, the resources that God will give you will always be sufficient for your program for now. There are many ministries that do not have priorities and focus. A ministry just starts and in one year, you may be holding five conferences. You may do very well except for the fact that the ministry finance may never rise. The entire collection for that ministry in a year at that level may be maybe five million. And now you are organizing a program and you are bringing two men of God from the U.S., and the two will come with their keyboards they will come with other people the man himself will fly first class you see that and the pa he can decide and call you and say my son has been crying that he needs to see nigeria you know what that means once a baby can walk he's a passenger full payments like the adult now you pay all of that and you continue to stretch members are you seeing what makes many members run away from the church the program will be powerful but in the end of it is always on deficit always on deficit you cannot build and you cannot grow that way some guys one day i think it was last year very nice group of friends that started to pray and they really believed that they were praying for a revival to come to their land and they sent a text they said apostle we need you in this land and we are going to bring you silver and gold we don't have but what we have mm, just just stop this there don't don't make a fool out of yourselves there are many anointed men of god in that region they will ignore them because they think they are not anointed you see that there is is there is somebody at your level that can serve the purposes of god have the humility to enjoy that grace and grow as time and wealth and wisdom allows even as i am now as a man of god i know my boundaries spiritually financially sociologically i will be stupid to do certain things and engage certain things faith is not foolishness you must know your boundary and respectfully stay there i will not get up right now and then go to portacourt or go anywhere and say i'm doing a city-wide crusade or go to the u.s and say everybody come and fill this stadium it's 
called vain glory you must get to a point where you know that god has tried for me but i'm still growing are we together there are many times during our leaders meeting you know we can share a few things that we want to execute and many times my people will just hear me keep quiet over the issue once i shelve an issue they know that's it leave it there it's very very important priorities what do we do now god these are all the things you have said we'll do but which do we start with first what do we do now so number one is an encounter that births your message your convictions your patterns number two strong leadership that makes your impact systemic three an execution strategy that defines your activities defines your culture and ethics defines your priorities number the fourth one is your system of reach i call it your marketing a system of marketing and reach now please listen because many of us men of god are trusting god for increased membership we are trusting god to honor us with more and more people there is a strategy growth does not just happen like that there are forces that must be engaged for growth to happen your marketing and reach what does that mean how do you let your world know you are there the people will not come when they do not know you are there the bible says and it was noised abroad that jesus was in town and it was noised abroad the lord gave the word he says great is the company of them that published it this is very important please listen no ministry will excel and thrive in today's world if you do not have an intentional system for your reach and your marketing this includes business the first way that you reach people now let me talk about ministry i'm focusing this on ministry i apologize for other you know um other areas of purpose the most effective way i know to really draw people is the power of results genuine results genuine results everybody say genuine results please say it say it. don't sleep say genuine results mm. two interesting people in scripture and the way they marketed jesus please sit down sir i'm sorry he's been standing all through i'm sorry sir look up please everyone once upon a time there was a madman in a city called gadara that madman was hidden in caves they would tie him and he would hurt himself and jesus crosses to the other side and the first person he meets is that madman after a conversation with him the madman is delivered are we together now and commotion is in the town because people lose immediately those who who owned the pigs they just lost and there was all kinds of things this man the bible said because of the impact of what happened he went and gathered 10 cities how many cities imagine that one striking walk of the kingdom upon your life gathering people let me tell you there are people who they are more than a microphone everybody knows about their challenges and their predicaments and when god touches them it becomes too notable people will always come to find out who did this testimonies are attractive they have a magnetic property they can draw men how did the scribes know 
that Jesus will be in this city and you'll be having a program. Notice the scribes never sat outside. They were always early for the meeting. They followed the ministry of Jesus, followed the details. They would hear that God did this today, tomorrow he did this, tomorrow he did that. This is where I will want to bring a little balance. There is no other means of marketing and reach that will be more effective than a transformed life. Please listen to me. The greatest way to invite people is to transform those you have. You are not going to pray for more people to come and join the pile of lack of transformation. Change the people. The greatest testimony that, that really blesses me in ministry is not that the sick were healed. Sincerely, thank God for that. It's not that this and that happened. People receive this. But when people say, my life changed, I listened to the message. Something happened. I got to know the Holy Spirit. I became a leader. That's transformation. This is why you see ministries like that of Joyce Mayer, Joel Austin. You may not see them do physical miracles. And so because of that, you may think that they are not doing anything. Until you see the systems that are intentionally transforming people. Some of them have TV stations in prisons. Some of them design the programs that the prisons use. And so the endorsement of the government has made them a voice. This is influence. I've told you that the kingdom advances in two ways primarily. Number one is evangelism. Number two is influence. The second was the woman at the well. Jesus comes to meet this woman at the well and her life was in shambles, many husbands, and then Jesus began to speak with her. When he was done speaking with her, he didn't even ask her, go and publicize. She ran and said, come see a man. This is how people come to our churches. Listen, they will not say, don't you know Apostle Joshua Selman? They say, come see a man. When the people come and encounter you and your God, then they will go back and say, now we believe, not because you told us, we have seen for ourselves let people not be invited and come to your church and say where is the man the service is over what did you invite me for what was your proposition what did you say would happen to me you told me if i came i would hear the word of god you told me if i came the worship would lift me you told me if i came i would see excellence i'm here now the grace is about to be shared i didn't see any of those things now that person will go back and still publicize but against your impact you say make sure that any day you see this man please don't waste your time there's nothing happening there do not ignore the referrals and the endorsement of transformed men do not ignore it this is one of the ways that God by his spirit has built this ministry for himself transformed lives you cannot deny transformation you may say a miracle is fake a breakthrough is fake a prophetic word is fake this is just psychology but how do you explain a transformed life are we together i was blind now i see i was wrong now i'm right i was in darkness now i'm in the light i was poor now i'm blessed this is the kingdom alongside the results and the testimonies that they bring pay attention to your media ministry media ministry do not ignore it son of man what seest thou and he said a flying scroll he was seeing the power of technology a scroll that can fly it's a scroll that contains information but it's not limited to a localized environment it can fly to regions the media ministry is powerful look what the social media is doing that someone can actually sit down from one spot it's a system 
that has broken down it has manifested omnipresence that i can be here and yet i can be there zuckerberg is in his house but he's in your phone he's in your heart he's in your life he's in your mind he's in your decisions he forced himself into your values you cannot plan without him he didn't ask you he forced his way there you can institutionalize your impact such that any generation that ignores god through you will pay for it whoever ignored jesus paid for it whoever ignored elijah paid for it whoever ignored moses paid for it the media ministry is powerful brand your content to reflect your values brand your content to reflect your values very important media is powerful there are many nations that i have not been to that today have been so marvelously blessed by what god is doing here it is the power of the internet it is the power of the media it's very important a disclaimer though you must have strong spiritual and emotional strength to explore the tool of the media because you see let me teach you something dear men of god an average man of god is already used to lavish celebration by the people within his circle nobody may have the right whether they agree with you or not they may not have the courage to confront you and say i don't like you welcome to the world where they, there are audacious men and women you can make one statement and your members are clapping and somebody comes and says for two weeks let's analyze the nonsense this preacher has said and someone will be saying that's my man of god he said that may be your man of god but that's my foolish man who i'm correcting if you don't have the emotional stamina listen to me because many christians are strong spiritually but we are weak emotionally they said this about me and it destabilizes you then do not be global it's a risk you are not authorized to be global as a ministry and as a man of god if you do not have the fortitude to stand disagreement to stand persecution do not fear being controversial provided you have convictions they talk about jesus and they talk about satan no matter how far you go it will be in between two of them your jesus is the one someone can paint on facebook have you seen different kinds of caricatures of jesus your jesus that we go to jerusalem and roll on the floor for and the people are just watching this madman i thought they were here for tourism my jesus this is where you died this is your tomb they say this is not the real tomb they say this is the one that i <laughs> don't be offended when someone has no regard for your values men are just men this is a powerful advice i'm giving you when i started out in ministry let me tell you something and an Jimmy is here he will testify i'm not somebody that i i'm a i'm a man of peace i honestly don't like trouble so if it means me lying down here for peace to reign i don't like controversy and i don't like trouble and that time i used to wear myself out i would pray and just spend time with god at about one or two when i now want to go and rest someone will now call me and say apostle then there was a place i used to meet in in the campus there are you at so 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 place i said no, i want to go and sleep and then they now blackmail me and say didn't you say god sent you for us I, i'm having pains i want to see you and you are complaining and i feel bad i just go back and say lord this is for your glory <laughs> let me tell you something about men you will never satisfy their desires you do not have that ability the same thing that will put a crown on the head of another is what another person will advocate that you take off if you do not sustain emotional intelligence you will break down nobody wants to hear anything negative about himself 
if if i produce this and you hold it and say but this is dirty you mean pastor Alpha, this is all you could do as brilliant as you are whereas while you are saying it this person is on his knees collecting it many of you here looking at me you want fame but without the cross that comes with fame there is a huge cross you think it's everybody that likes me are you joking you think it's everybody that believes in me are you joking you think it's everybody that respects me are you joking have you not seen people insult papa Ia deboe have you not seen people insult kenneth hagin one time i stumbled across a video material that wrote down the name of almost every known man of god and just captioned it that they are all going to hell i said ah these are the guys that have taught the whole body of christ so if they are all going to hell let's find out quickly so that we can because you can't dodge any of them i mean this guy just carried the body of christ and said the church is going to hell convictions do you have the stamina to be controversial because every great vision is first fought before it is honored it is the price for renaissance is the price for a revolution is the price for doing something different ask the fathers when women began to preach in the church it was war when the power of god began to move i remember a man of god i went to minister in his church and he was telling me about his state he said those days if someone falls under the anointing they can almost go and lock you up he said when the power of god started moving in and through his ministry it was strange they said he was diabolic he was devilish and all of that how will you feel if someone came for your service and while everybody was kneeling down they were just looking at you like this Say, is this what you call a man of God? This is what you call church? Shame on you. And you go back and say, God, they said shame on me. God will say, go and find out what they said about me. <laughs> Let, let's keep going. How many of you precious sisters, they see you walk around. Oh, this lady, no earrings. Oh, this lady, head tie all the time. And you feel bad. And you are standing. Because some persons who have their values don't want to keep their values and come to destroy your confidence bending to become like people will break you because you will have to bend to every direction and your body cannot bend to every direction somebody will say sing traditionals alone we are africans you will dance and somebody say no that dance is is a demonic dance you are doing traditional and you are dancing did you see the way that lady was no 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 the way that lady is dancing with the brothers their mind will not be focused on the cross now you go back to sing hymns and someone will, you know listen be guided by the fear of the lord by conscience and by posterity nothing more you live to please everybody you have trouble god made the work easy focus on him is the only one who will mark the script everybody is a student the best student in a class will still be assessed so don't let the ignorance of people around just come and challenge you are we blessed i just digressed a bit we're going to pray to teach you this let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you on easy lies the crown the the head that wears the crown it looks glorious when you see great people and great ministers sit on the throne but let me tell you ask every man of god here if you say a conference is coming you can tell them sir i saw a vision it is done the bills are not there ultimately is that man's faith that is going to stretch you come and say pastor just to reassure you the conference must happen except god didn't give me the revelation you had the revelation this is the man that is going to produce the finances by faith that's why you see depressed preachers everywhere sisters that's why many of you are afraid of marrying men of god when you weigh the trouble
elbow and wear this. Just say, Kai. <laughs> That's the price for glory, my dear people. Living in a world where everybody loves you, that world is a dream. That world is a big dream. Do you have the stamina to be controversial and yet focused and yet determined? There are times that I go to minister and I thank God for the honor. Sometimes right from the airport, you know, sometimes people have bands that play sometimes they have some dignitaries that they bring to welcome me and i just come down and i see people who don't know me and you just see the anger who is the guy this is him apostle apostle koinonia so what i put koinonia i mean you see the anger this guy i say what is it my fault what, did i stop you from rising i mean look at look you see how people are there are many times people talk about my coming in many regions. They hype it. Apostle is coming. Your life. I'm telling you, just come. I can discern. I'm a spiritual man. As soon as I enter, people are jumping. Sometimes you can see through the crowd. What is this? What is this generation becoming? Just because a man entered? Jesus entered. You didn't clap. Now a man is, you know. And then I just laugh it over and I love them. When I come up to preach, usually sometimes they are standing, oh yeah, let's see what he's saying that is unusual. What has he said that Kenneth Higgins has not said? What has he said? Let's see. It. And many times, usually when I start talking, five, ten minutes, they start softening up a little. They just look at nod and later they do like they want to open the notebook. They open it a little. And then later on, they're like, ah, this, I mean, this is. <laughs> Pastor, when they persecute you, it's not unusual. It's not always because you are wrong. Sometimes it's because you are right. Your assignment is to help even your persecutors. So accommodate their ignorance while they change. That's what makes you a leader. The ability to see the more superior version of themselves. Hmm. I'm blessed by my own teaching here already. The last. The last secret to sustainable impact is the availability of financial resources please write it down this is a minister's conference and i'm just hoping and praying that god truly added value this morning to someone's life finance please look up pastors you will bear me witness and every man of god here will tell you Whoever ignores the place of financial resources in kingdom advance will pay for it and pay for it again and again. You see, come, David down. When you start out in ministry, you don't really need finances. Usually, you meet at one corner, under a tree, somewhere. All you are concerned about is the power of God falls on you. You teach. You don't need a mic. You don't need anything. So your focus will be on Jesus, your growth, and all of that. But now you get to a point where leadership, where administration, and other things begin to come in. The financial burden of ministry can strangle your prayer life. It can strangle your word life. It can even strangle your values. Everybody say finance. One of the questions that I ask the Lord sincerely from the depth of my heart. I learned this from Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club. He said when God called him to do ministry, he asked God three things. He said, Lord, please give me three things. Number one, wisdom. Number two, favor. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you will give me these three, I will go. When I heard it, I went back to God. I said, God, 
i don't know if i'm going to ask you i've asked you before for your presence and now maybe let me ask first before i will find out later that i made a mistake please talk to me about the finance of this vision that you are showing me how is it going to come and where will it come from you see the way ministers have been attacked everywhere you call people to sow seeds the next thing someone is insulting you they, that is not the system of the world and of course i know that here and there people have exaggerated these things because there are bills to pay i don't want to tell you the weekly budget that runs this ministry it is not necessary but just believe me when i tell you you can run a conference with the weekly budget of this ministry and we're not even in our own place it's true the rentals the transportation the power and all the things that have to be put in place and yet you are supposed to be focused and loving that's why some men of god come off the stage you see the anger Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Is it this? What part of amen can't you can't and you know that this this pain, the person is not bad. He's trying to say encourage me, and you are refusing. <laughs> the Holy Ghost can use money to create joy. <laughs> you are pastors imagine that we came here right now and we told you there is no finance for tonight's meeting the communion alone for tomorrow if i tell you how much was spent on the communion just for tomorrow's miracle service you will be surprised you will ask yourself whether it's necessary or necessary must we take communion can't we just speak prophecy instead prophecy is cheaper just be blessed i mean what is there with communion It will not cost you anything for starters less than 25 million naira per month to float a television station how much per month not hd that's the channels you switch that you say please let's move to another channel that's what they paid did you hear what i said those channels that you see a lot of haze is it black is it white this is what they paid didn't satan pay men to say jesus is not lord as soon as he resurrected they called some people and said okay come let me tip you say jesus is not lord we will settle the words on the top and satan is still using money today if the church of the lord jesus christ is not empowered in these end times my brothers and my sisters please listen to me this is not about an addiction to money this is money just like the anointing tools for kingdom advance it is important some of our visitors we just got news that because of i think the convocation or so i didn't even know there was convocation happening on on saturday and now they just passed a directive that you know all our people there they should evacuate them from the um the the hotels that belong you know that we lodge them there can you imagine that just like that get out out we have visitors coming you and your money get out now imagine if i come and whisper and say reverend vandoma pastor fred please we need five hundred thousand this night now can you find a way if i do it directly to pinch me so find a way money can help you have integrity oh let me tell you this it's true it's true financial resources are important provided they are kept within the jurisdiction of their relevance they work wonders we need heavy financial resources the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive the vehicle that carries the gospel is heavy every church thank you 
And that includes businesses. Please listen. We're going to pray. Must have, I've stated this before, but number one, must have a strategy for income generation. Now, the Bible is very clear as to how financial resources should come into the church. The Bible allows for tithes, allows for offerings, and all kinds of givings and partnership. The Bible allows that. Provided the resources are used with integrity and truthfulness. But because of the peculiarity of our world today, if all you do is depend on tithes and offering, you will only run church services. You can't run projects. I've, I've, been, I've been to the churches of all my dear friends and I've seen the projects that they are doing. And many of you may not know, but with all humility and to the glory of God, we acquired a property recently. And um, I may not tell you how much that is, but I can only give you an idea. 36 plots of land. Now listen. It was paid cash without raising any, even the leaders didn't even know. So that when we come to church, we can serve God in truth and in spirit. And not just to come and say, people, we are going to have to do this. I'm not saying it's wrong to challenge people. Don't trivialize it. Reverend Uban Doma shared here that there are people who have the grace for helps. Anybody that is a kingdom financier, your first assignment after knowing God is to be extremely wealthy. If you are not wealthy, you are wicked and you are failed. To supply for the resources and the blessings of heaven. I insist and I make sure that there's no financial pressure whatsoever on the workers and the leaders in this ministry. That everything that has to do with committing seeds is done by revelation and truthfulness. Don't be angry when you see pastors manipulating people. I don't endorse it. But sometimes it's an expression of the pain. They were mentored to trivialize finances. And so they pursued the things of God. Sincerely so. But now they found out that there is a level of financial capability you must have to excel. A Jimmy, during the business session, for those of you who were here, he ran us through a lot of demands minus luxury. Pastors will tell you here, the amount of an average man of God just on dressing, just not luxury, just on dressing, can build many houses. Are we together? Because a man of God cannot dress shabby and dress scattered. He's the same you that will say, what is this? This is not Jesus. When I started with the Lord, there was a year that God opened my eyes to the necessity of financing ministry I remember when I switched and I said believers it's me that has been teaching you on purpose and the power of God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the kingdom now in addition to that curriculum God has introduced finance whoa whoa I had I got the blow of my life apostle has backsliding Jesus is Lord what happened apostle leaving all of these things to come to mundane things like finances now I'm, I'm not i'm not i'm not don't hate anyone don't don't i'm like joseph sometimes persecution is proof that you are really sent you see the ignorance in the people and you know if i don't manifest they will remain like this they are persecuting me is validating the fact that they are ignorant I went to the Lord crying to him and said, God, what is all this? And the Lord told me, you can choose to listen to men or listen to me. I'm showing you the future. And I said, Lord, show me your ways, please. Let me not get to a point in ministry where I have to do what I shouldn't do because I'm looking for finance. Most members 
don't know that men of God have other things with their lives too. Who pays the school fees of that man of God's child? How do you run the church? By the privilege of God's grace. There are so many of our children here that we take care of. It's not something to blow a trumpet about. Not school fees. They are upkeep. There are people whose daily living is in the pocket of another person. And that done effortlessly. I have seen and I tell you by the privilege of God's mercy. The advantage of financial resources. Maybe this is why some of you came for this conference. It may be a pastor conference but you have done well in these other areas. But you may have been the victim of this scamish communication by the gates of hell. That financial resources are not necessary. Change your mind. Please change your mind. The earlier the better. So that you will not eat your children in the future. And so that you will not sell your children to pay debt. The prophet, although a prophet, he died and left his children and one woman in debt. By the time you pastor families that are not doing well, you will find out that it is in the efficiency of the people that you are also blessed. Hallelujah. When God showed me this, I was grateful when I found the keys. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Full-time ministry in today's world does not mean the absence of activating streams of income. It means full-hearted commitment. Hear what I'm telling you. The 21st century church, you need to adjust your understanding of full-time ministry. Full-time ministry does not mean throw away every opportunity to lift you. It means let your heart be committed full-time. Because if you ignore everything and say, me, I'm not, I'm not a businessman, I don't do anything, let me tell you, hunger will always drive Israel to Egypt. It was hunger that drove Israel to Egypt. Like he's driving many of you right now. You love God. Until now you are beginning to teach things that you know should not be. If you must be outstanding in ministry, please make it a point of duty by the grace of God to conquer this finance thing. The same way you press for the anointing. The same way you press for revelation. Don't dichotomize them. And don't let the devil make you feel one is carnal. And no, they are all spiritual. What is carnal about money? It takes the spirit for you to prosper. The same way you press for character, anointing, revelation. Please add finance to the list. As the tools together. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. I've taught you. No prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took resources to bring the body. Who was the owner of the grave that Jesus entered? He came out from it and saved you. But whose grave? Who donated his grave for prophecy to be fulfilled? Whose donkey did Jesus climb? If he was broke and he did not have a donkey, there would be no triumphant entry. He was born in a manger. Whose manger? I will never pastor and lead the people who know God and don't know finances. They will know both. I believe in influence. I believe in the ease that kingdom understanding together with influence provides. Africa, do not mix Christianity and the depraved culture that our servitude, our pre- and post-colonial servitude has been interwoven with Christianity. We mix everything together and make doctrines out of them. Africa has largely been a territory of servitude. We have not understood leadership. We don't know influence. It's strange to our culture. And so in the dealings of God, we limit our understanding to submission, which is important. But we hate influence. And the principles that get us to the corridors of power, we hate and we fight. It's wonderful to fear God. 
it's wonderful to love God but if you do not have an efficient leadership you will not last there will not be a system of building the reason why this building is built because is because one block allowed another to stay on it if the block refuses and said that's not how I am you would not have a structure leadership number three strategy you have to execute systemically to build according to patterns number four is your reach from Jerusalem from Judea Samaria to the ends of the earth he would have just said to the ends of the earth but he broke them in levels the way you sell Jesus in Jerusalem is not how you would do it in Judea it's not how you would do it in in Samaria for every one of these regions and levels there are strategies for your reach and finally finance you need finance it is one of the greatest tools do you know that in Europe today pastor Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe they've never had one citywide crusade one one you know what they do agree to be gay and agree to be a Muslim who will pay you through school and they go back and say daddy this is what they said you say I won't pay your school fees and you will not be a Muslim you say I've gotten the answer sir where is the place to sign the signature to be gay fine to be a Muslim fine one of our dear ladies I remember many years ago she got born again her brother was still a Muslim the father was still a Muslim then the brother got born again then eventually the father got born again when the father got born again pastor true story the wealthy people stash money at the back of a car and drove from Kogi to Lagos they said what is wrong sit down what happened is it that you lost in business what happened because they believe if you come to Jesus it is because you are frustrated and you are welcome but then they are saying i mean how have you reduced yourself to give your life to christ what happened the day she told me i said my god they snatched the car with money and opened it please deny jesus and have money to get your life back hear me if michael jackson ever said jesus even by mistake he would have won more souls i am michael jackson i love jesus on his shirt you will write your name too i am sam i love even a wizard would say i am a wizard i need jesus that's the power of influence nobody asks you to wear what you wear they made you wear it they created a need and forced it we can force a generation to see the relevance of jesus not by poking it on people's eyes but building correctly the church must prosper please pastors hear me gone are the days where you tell people i'm a pastor and they pity you they say so pastor alpha this is it you went and got a lecturing job in university of Jos. And now with all that God has done, this is how you want to waste your life. Whoever said ministry was a cause. Whoever said serving Jesus is what people do when they are failed in life. And they don't know what else to do. They say instead of wasting my life, at least let me serve in the vineyard. We must change that perception. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes finance to lift it up we are mandated to lift it high we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you we will raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you na doka kasunanta ubangi chika isaya bo na kirma ma
please hold hands with someone by your left and by your right. Micah chapter 4, please. We are going to pray. Sila Maharusia Katabranda Gadusia. There is coming a generation that will defy this. There has to be a generation that will represent Christ properly. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the influence of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of other stratas and influences and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it. Next verse. Verse 2. And many nations, how many? Many nations shall come say come and let us go up to the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the lord shall go forth from zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem you see let me tell you every great move of god starts like a joke the kingdom of god is likened to a living it's a parable a living looks small and harmless until it sees the what they call it the dough you just mix a little of it and stand back and watch the power of that tiny thing you added i remember those days when my mother would be making cake or something i used to wonder that small thing just throw the thing there and just mix it and it begins to rise that's what is happening something you are receiving we are making noise and people are these are noise makers they are just broke people consoling themselves uh -uh. the lord himself is the captain of this army god has gathered us from several places to tell you that whether or not in the fivefold ministry like reverend ubandoma shared or whatever dimension of kingdom service you must insist that lord through you my generation will know that jesus is lord lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. hallelujah hallelujah i wish the minister's conference were to run for days i would have taught you a lot of things one of them is the ministry of men you are not free until men come into your life. Please listen. We are going to pray. If you have money, you are not yet favored. You know you are favored when you have access to the hearts of men. True favor is not just money. True favor is men and all that they have. I can give you money. Doesn't mean I love you. But when I give you my heart, with my heart is everything connected to me. Listen, let me tell you this. I remember the first major financial miracle that God brought to this ministry. Till tomorrow, I don't know the person. It was like a joke. Because when they make transfers to the ministry, I get the alerts. And I saw an alert that almost brought me to my knees. I said, God, what is this? Who is this person? And they didn't even text to say, okay, I'm the one. I said they should try to see if they can get me the person, and they couldn't. And I just said, this is it. Men. If you do not have men that lift your hands, you are going to fall in ministry. 
you may be moses but your hands will be tired and you will need the hands that hold you financially spiritually giving you encouragement and love you can't imagine how blessed i am hearing that pastor left gombe gombe is very far zamfara far reverend ubandoma was here with his family he's here again one of my friends called me and said he's coming and you know this is not a standard conference we didn't send any letter of invitation i spotted different ministers here and there father the mighty men that will hold my hands as i lift up your name i draw them in this season lift your voice and pray favor with men favor with men favor with men favor with men oh god sala barakatosa predekatesh kalaba sanadas open the doors of favor with men hallelujah two more prayer points and we're done when jesus came to the fig tree he expected to find fruit he came because he was hungry not finding fruits he cursed it if he found fruit he would have blessed it If your life and your ministry does not produce extraordinary results, your life will be full of bitterness and hatred and anger and competition. This is what you see happening around the body of Christ. This one hating this one, this one fighting this one, this one getting angry. There is no need. When God invests a dimension of strange results in your life and ministry, by the teaching of truth and by the mighty works that come from your hands you will be surprised to see the way the nations will flow they will inconvenience themselves to honor christ in your life father give me results real results results of salvation results of transformation results of miracles signs wonders Breakthroughs is someone praying. And evidence is the end of all argument. A genuine result is the end of all argument. You are in business, cry. Give me results in business. Give my organization results consistent results please pray give me results hallelujah hallelujah John the prophet is in the prison and he sends his disciples to question the messiahship of Jesus. He says, go and ask him, are you the messiah or should we expect another? Jesus does not answer. He turns back and begins to heal the sick and cast out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell him what are the signs of the messiah. Ask John. You need real results in your life. You heard the testimony of our precious mommy. You see that? That you just sit in a car and something, 
a challenge of many years just goes. Everybody is a giver. There is a level of results that will make them give. Please listen. Let me tell you this. The same person who will say, I will not give you five naira, is the same person who will carry money and say, sir, the privilege of having this. Everybody who gives to you has relatives in need that they say, don't disturb me again, and they will come. There is a level of impact that will make any seed look like a favor to you. You need to trust God. Results empower you yourself. There are companies today and there are businesses today that take a sizable portion of their profits and I'm not talking of small startups and transfer to this ministry consistently because of something that happened. I don't say this to brag. It's because we're in a pastor's conference. I am a non-executive board member in certain companies. I never sat down in any board meeting. I don't even know them. They believe I represent the ark of God to their business. And they are there. And I just see alerts in my phone. Where is this coming from? Don't trivialize results. Results can make your life easy. We are going to pray it again. Please don't be tired. Our time is gone, but we are men of God. Listen, Lord, I have seen certain dimensions of results, but multiply the results upon my life. Beyond argument, please pray. Beyond contention. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There is a goal, there is an object behind everything that we do, that we call ministry. Whether it is the fivefold ministry or your business as a ministry, ministry is any channel that can lead to souls saved, lives transformed, and Jesus glorified. If giving birth can do that, it is ministry. If singing can do that, it is ministry. He says there was a man sent from God. His name was John 7. The same, the Bible says, came for a witness. Say witness. To bear witness of the light that men through him, his witness, his testimony, his results might believe. That's it. When all is said and done, dear people of God, this is all we are driving at. That through my life, through the hand of God upon my life, through my business, through the ministry, through family, through everything that Jesus be glorified. You're going to turn this to a prayer and say, Father, use everything. Use my results. Use my life. Use my teachings. Use my business. Use my publicity. Even for your glory. Someone pray. For your glory. Use the wealth that you give me. Use the influence that you give me. The power of the Holy Spirit. Access to the hearts of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll just speak over your life now. We we'll allow the impartation for the miracle service. Our time is gone. We want to just release everyone.
to go and rest. Tonight we have a session and then we are breaking the fast tomorrow by one. And after that we return for the miracle service and an impartation. But I will pray over all that we are involved with. But then the impartation, I know that many of you have come to receive. Look, let me tell you this. Truly speaking, a man can receive nothing except it is given. If God does not give you, you cannot have it. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want to pray. And the elders of the Jews build it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it. It's one thing to desire to build. But the Bible says they prospered and they finished. While they were building, there was prophecy. That was ensuring that the building prospers and that it finishes. It matters the voice and the voices that speak over your life and over your ministry. Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until a voice opened his heavens. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven. When he met with John... John said, mm -mm, I desire, I mean, this is what you have is what I desire. I'm not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. No man can open, as it were, in this regard, his own heavens. It will take a voice. God kept watching but never spoke from heaven. When he submitted to the prophetic ministry of John, his heavens were opened and a voice spoke. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen, pastors, a voice has to tell creation to hear you. Hear ye that church. Hear ye that business. Hear ye that radio program. Hear ye that TV program. Otherwise, you will go up the mountain, nobody will come. You will go up the valley, nobody will come. You will stand by the rivers of Gennesaret and nobody will come because a voice never said they hear you. Hear ye him. There are men and women of God here. You are anointed. God has blessed you. But your environment is not placing a demand on the grace. There seems to be a resistance. I have seen powerful men of God. Absolutely anointed. But there is no open doors. No influence. No access. No increase. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from God. I submit before you and even before your people. I confess that there is nothing I have in myself outside of Christ. The privilege of the office, the mantle, and the grace you have given. This has come from you and it belongs to you. I declare over every ministry here, by the power of prophecy be shifted to the next level of exploit be shifted to the next level of exploit be shifted to the next level of exploit I declare in the name of Jesus the two lift gates that are closed over your ministry we speak right now may they be opened in the name of Jesus The men and the women that must show up in this season to both protect and to lift the hand of God upon your life. I call them by prophecy right now. I'm seeing a key in the spirit. A big key. This is what the Lord is showing me. 
Lord, whatever this access represents in the spirit, and for whoever this is for, I pray and I cry to you, let the keys of their individual territories be given unto them in the name of Jesus. There are men of God here that love God, but you are out of revelation. You have cast out. You don't even know what to study again. You have preached everything. Fresh illumination from the throne. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for your prayer life. Shakato barakatabatea. Greto sedekete barakata. Let fresh fire come upon your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says certain men came to David in the cave of Adolam. They saw him in a cave, yet they were not afraid. They still said you will be king over us. Listen, it is terrible to have people come to you just looking for your glory alone. You must have people that whether in glory and in shame, they are there for you. I declare may God find such people and call to your life. There are pastors that have many members, but they do not have kings. They do not have men who have voices. Listen to me. It is in the multitude of men that a king's honor is. But in the multitude of kings, a king's dominion is also enforced. You don't just need men. You also need men that have voices. I pray for you. God will not only bring men. He will bring influences to your ministry. Whatever is stunting the growth of any church here, any ministry, you have done the best in gathering everything you know to do. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, may the gates of your church be open. May the gates of your fellowship be open. May the gates of your ministry be open. Hallelujah. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There are many pastors. Any good thing you do is misunderstood. You call for a healing meeting. They say you are using charms. You want to bless people. They say you are selfish. You sow into people. They say it's manipulation. You don't give. They say you are greedy. Let me tell you. Correct perception. Correct sight. Is something only God can do. He touched his eyes. And men were like trees. He touched it again. God needs to touch the eyes of people where your church is located so that they will see you for what you stand for. Because there are times, listen to me, that before you get to the king, Ahitophel reached there before you and he can give a counsel that is not of God. I declare every misrepresentation of your life, of your ministry, of your business, of your organization, let it be straightened out and corrected now. You have humbled yourself to honor me, to honor the grace that God has put upon my life. I cry to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the grace and the mantle of honor, let it follow you back to your church. Let it follow you back to your business. Let it follow you back to your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me speak over your finances. We have taught here in this house that there are three levels of wealth. There is transactional wealth. Wealth that comes by exchanging value for a reward. There is transformational wealth. Wealth that comes on account of the impact you create in people. But there is sovereign wealth. Wealth that comes by prophecy and by the finger of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every church here and I pray for every project and every individual here. By the mystery of divine supplies, the raven that can come to feed Elijah at Brook Cherry, let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. Let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two things. It says, 
the lord knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble there are people in ministries that the devil will position intentionally to continue to misrepresent the ministry and to destroy what they represent you are going to have to trust god for grace listen to me listen to me very carefully one wrong voice can scatter what you have been doing for years one wrong voice the rumor about jesus that he said he would destroy the temple and he will build it in three days some said he will build it in one day all the two they had it somewhere listen to me there are people that come to churches and tear down everything god is doing they you will never see them in one church in three years they've gone to 10 churches then they start writing articles i've been everywhere and i've been to every church no man of god is sincere no man of god is true they may be well meaning but there are spirits that are responsible for those things i pray in the name of jesus that a spiritual garrison be created around your ministry that protects the hand of god upon your ministry in the name of jesus christ for any ministry trusting god for land you are trusting god to shift to the next level may the god of heaven in a way you may not even understand may he surprise you in jesus name